This is a Starboost Iron Man helmet. Originally, it was a plastic 3D print, but it has been turned into a one-of-a-kind cosplay prop. It is wearable and includes internal wiring for accent lighting with see-through light-up eyes. And I'm going to show you how I made it. Let's go. What's up, you guys? My name is Mark, and welcome to my channel. The first step of this build is going to be 3D printing the files. Let's go! I downloaded the files off the Deal 3D website and will have a link in the description below. I utilized Kira to size and scale the helmet to my liking. I printed this helmet and all the parts in 0.12 millimeter layer thickness to reduce the amount of sanding and smoothing I had to do on the prints when they were finished. I used PLA material and printed the pieces on my Ender 5 Plus and my Ender 3 S1. The main portion of the helmet had to be printed on my Ender 5 because my Ender 3's build plate was not big enough. I prefer to use my Ender 3 when I can because it has a direct drive extruder, but sometimes it's necessary to use my Ender 5 when I have prints that are really large, such as this one. Massive, huge, not a bad one. When printing is finished, you can remove the supports and align the printed parts to make sure that everything fits together properly. Unfortunately, this next step is not very fun, but it is definitely the most important part of any build. I sand the surface of the helmet with a variety of sandpaper from 150 to 240 grit. After sanding, I rinse the parts and put on a layer of Bondo in the spots that need a little bit more help. The Bondo helps fill small holes, gouges, and imperfections from the printing process that weren't able to be fixed by sanding. After the Bondo is dry, the parts are sanded again with 240 and 320 grit sandpaper. Now that the most tedious and labor-intensive part of the build is over, the helmet is ready to be covered in filler primer. Lather it up, Brenda. This is followed by a repetitive sequence of sanding and spraying until you have an almost smooth and perfect part or I guess until the part is smooth to your own personal liking. Use increasingly fine sandpaper every time a layer of filler primer is applied, and eventually you will have a very smooth part. To connect the three parts of the helmet, I created tabs out of leftover printed raft material and used magnets to connect the pieces together. Yeah, bitch! Magnets! Oh! A heat gun was used to orientate the tabs and a soldering iron melted them into place. And at this point, everything is put together and we are ready to paint. I used gloss white, gold, and gray spray paint from rust -Oleum. I started by covering the whole helmet in gray and used masking tape to cover up the parts of the helmet I wanted to remain gray. I then added the white and gold and followed that up with a few layers of gloss clear coat. The next part was incorporating the lights into the mask, and this can be kind of tricky if you don't have any prior experience to electrical circuits or soldering. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing it really, really well. The items I used for this part of the build are multicolor 24 gauge wire, a total of 11 PCB LEDs, a 12 volt battery and a battery holder, a teeny tiny small toggle switch, a soldering iron, and of course solder, some helping hands to hold the LEDs and wires while I solder, a hot glue gun with extra hot glue, and a wire strippers and a nippers. I started by drawing out my circuit. This can take some time, and especially if you don't have any prior experience with electrical circuits, I recommend going online to make sure that you have everything that you need and that your voltage and currents are set correctly for the type of LEDs that you use. Once I had an idea of how I wanted to wire things, I got to work. I used the magnets that connect the different parts of the mask together as conduction points. This means that for the circuit to be connected, the magnets have to be centered and clasped. I achieved this by stripping a long strand of wire and wrapping it around the magnet prongs. I then soldered the wire into place. Now, when the magnets connect, it completes my circuit and all the lights light up as they should. I used a total of 11 LEDs and placed them in various points throughout the mask. I used hot glue to secure the LEDs and tack the wires into place. I installed a slide switch at the bottom of the mask so, so that even if the magnets are connected, I could still decide if I wanted to turn the LEDs on or off by using that switch. The LED eyes were purchased on Amazon and were installed the same exact way as the accent LED lights. The battery pack that came with the LED eyes holds two AA batteries and actually already has an integrated switch into the battery pack, so I didn't need to install a separate slide switch on the bottom of the mask. And after that, everything was done and the final product looked like this.
Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share my content, and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out, spread my content, and reach new audiences. Thank you guys again so much, and stay classy.